everyone. My name is Janelle Nichols and welcome to Memory Matters for All Ages. If you've joined us each week, you know that last week we talked about early onset dementia. And this week we're going to talk about dementia and activity. And I want to welcome back to the program Catherine Kilpatrick. She is our speech language pathologist. She has over 40 years of experience. She is a national speaker. She works with individuals. She coaches uh, staff, uh, individuals, uh, business organizations, business people. Um, and I know that you are also an author of over 30 publications. And one of the reasons that you wrote these publications is because of your heart for activity right. for people that have a diagnosis right. and oftentimes when there is a diagnosis families don't know what to do right. and uh, your publications and the things you have written are so practical mm -hmm. and so common sense and uh, can be such a help to family and I know this is where uh, a great part of your heart lies. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I kind of got the bug once I started creating some materials. My first workbook was for actually for stroke patients back in mm -hmm. 1977, and it has been called kind of like the Bible oh, for speech-language pathologists sure. and adults. But in my early 80s, I was seriously ill, and I was not able to get out and about. Um, I had allergies or sensitivities to chemicals in the environment, so I couldn't read books. I couldn't do newspapers. I couldn't walk around in my neighborhood when in the summertime because of the Chemlon type spray mm -hmm. uh, things. I was very, very limited in what I could do. I would play Scrabble with myself. We didn't have all this electronic stuff. Mm -hmm. So I kind of created and then finally came up with counted cross stitches, something that I could do that didn't have a lot of toxins being released from it. And I think that's a little bit where I got, you know what, we need to come up with some activities that sure. might be able to work for folks. Well, in other words, you had to be resourceful because you couldn't do what you normally yeah, did. Yeah, so you I had was... to uh, be resourceful and inventive and come up with some things that could still keep mm -hmm. you active. And yeah. so that's why I created all these products. I have puzzle sure. books that are simpler, mm -hmm. uh, conversation starters, fun questions, sure. things that are multi-generational, you know, mm -hmm. let's share our stories. Yeah. And it's so much fun to see families when I go in and home health then start to become engaged mm -hmm. and they say, oh my gosh. And then I have a reminiscence book that has like all the headlines from I the 20th that. century. I love that book. And I love boy, that you go book. through and you go, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. And I love to see the look. It's a I conversation starter. It is, yes, it is. Yes. It's a memory yeah. provoker for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you brought up something that uh, in the assisted living realm, of course, we have activity directors mm -hmm. and we have activity directors for um, uh, the, the area that is for specifically for people with more advanced dementia. Right. And, and we keep them very busy, and, and our directors are just awesome. They're very, they very are. creative. But what about folks who are at home and the family mm -hmm. uh, family member is caring for right, them? Right, right. Um, I think one of the things that's really important to, to do, and this is when I go in to do an assessment, what did the person enjoy? So I was kind of a crafty person, so I did find a craft activity that I was finally able to do. But I also liked words, so I was uh, you know, playing Scrabble by myself because we didn't have Scrabble with friends that you could do on an electronic device. I probably would have gone a whole different career route if I had, you know, if this had happened much later in my life. But it's really important to understand what somebody enjoys. So I had a patient once that used to uh, have a rose garden years and years and years ago before their life got real crazy. So it was a matter of maybe doing that or even just having a bouquet of roses, you know, that they could arrange. I mean, just mm -hmm. a variety of things. And what happens is once you start to have some of the cognitive deficits, uh, you don't think of other things to do. You know what you progress to. And so you may be doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. Now you can't do that. And so you don't think, well, there's simpler ones. And I'm a real advocate of not giving them children's things unless they're doing things with young children. Oh, because I, agree. I, I appreciate um, you know, that. Which is so why much. I've done mm -hmm. a lot of the puzzle books. I mean, right. I have a great series. And go on my website, there's sample pages for all the products. Print them off mm -hmm. and have fun with them. And the other thing is with um, activities. You want to go in, and, and I assess, what are their preserved abilities? So maybe the person's hearing isn't that 
good anymore, but they can read. And reading is often preserved to the middle stages of um, Alzheimer's disease. So we may be able to build on that. So it's almost like doing a, just a very specific person-centered plan. Maybe they can't write letters anymore, but maybe they could print or maybe they could do the word search. So it's finding out what they can do that then you can build on that once you know what they like. Mm -hmm. You know, so Janelle, you're younger than I am. I do not want to play bingo. Okay. okay. I don't care. I don't care what the All prize right. is. However, <laughs> if you were having me teach someone their numbers and was doing bingo with them, I do it all thing. day long. Right. I do it all day long. So right. we got to get that special story. Well, you've got to look at what the person did in their right. life, what right. what their career was, what they love to do, absolutely. what their where their talent lies, yeah, absolutely. and figure out a way that they can still mm -hmm. use that. Mm -hmm. If if I understand absolutely. what you're saying, absolutely. Yes. And sometimes there's new yeah. interests that come up, you mm -hmm. know. But I mean, sure. it's really important to accentuate the positive. So what is their positive? We sure. just know what they can't do anymore. Sure. And the third thing is who can be there for them. Mm -hmm. So my mom. And my and my deal was Scrabble, mm -hmm. you know. And the other family members usually didn't want to play. My sister-in-law and I did, but that was our thing. And so mm -hmm. somebody else had a different thing. And I think that's important to find, you know, what the particular match is in terms of, of all of that. Because yeah. the um, and to just see a patient, um, I can remember going in and the nurse said, "Why don't you see what you can do?" Um, the daughter is now taking care of her dad. And he had a hearing loss and he had dementia. And I brought in some of my workbooks and we did some simple brain games where I cued him and everything for half an hour, 45 minutes. He was like thrilled. I see this all the time. Then she got some ideas of things that she could do. Mm -hmm. And folks, I'm going to put a link that is, you have to watch on my website about a gentleman with severe Alzheimer's disease and what an activity person did with them and the result of that. Whenever I show that at conferences, everybody's like, oh my gosh, who's to say that this person needs to sit and do nothing all day long? Because we met something that was really, really exciting for Does him. Does that link have a title or is it pretty obvious if our folks get on? Uh, I have to give you the, the link or yeah. my, you know, go on to my website and email me and I'll send it. Okay. It's got some, it's like the YouTube things. They've okay. got weird I'd love. Links. I'd love to see that. Oh my yeah. gosh, it's yeah. just absolutely amazing. Sure. I haven't sure. shared that with you. No, I don't oh, think okay. so. Right. So if I if I hear what you're saying, it is um, uh, you're saying that these folks can still be active, be resourceful, come up with a plan, think what they did for right. for a living, what their where their talent lies, but keep them active. Yeah. Um, it's like a uh, let's say your mom loved to cook, but you no longer, of course, want her using the stove or the oven. Mm -hmm. There are other cooking activities that can be done. She can chop the nuts for the banana bread or she can chop the vegetables for the soup. Right, There's right. things that she can do. And the thing is too, there are gentlemen that might be into woodworking or things with tools that mm -hmm. we don't really want them doing. I had one gentleman and he had had a stroke and he couldn't use both hands and so he became the mentor for one of his family members to take over the woodworking stuff that he mm -hmm. was doing. Sure. So you know, well, there's many a, options. Absolutely. Mentoring or giving advice or mm -hmm. counseling, th right. that keeps you active, keeps you engaged yeah. in your craft and what you love to do. Good. Sure. All, All right. right. Do you have some suggestions for yeah, us? Yeah, and I'm going to breeze through these um, because I want to just give, I want to help people think through some options, okay? okay? So, for example, the person that likes to golf, maybe they could enjoy miniature golf now, or they could go and just hit um, golf balls, or watch major tournaments, or DVDs. Um, I had one patient um, where the son would record things in the DVD era, and then they would watch them, and they'd watch them over and over again. He didn't necessarily remember them, but he enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. Man who liked to do crossword puzzles, so I've created many crossword puzzle type books um, that are more reminiscent and I would put in some of the letters. We'd photocopy the page and then we'd put in extra letters and then he was able to copy because the answers were on the side column. Um, often people can't um, tell their story easily but they like to reminisce so I've had family members you know take a picture and then write a short phrase next to it because they can often read aloud so they could start telling their story. Mm -hmm. um, playing cards, like we talked about teaming up, a simplified version of crafts. You know, I've got sure. this fancy loom and I'm thinking, 
you know, I was going to move it, but I'm thinking, you know what, I think at this point in my life, maybe I want to walk on the beach instead of sitting in the house with the loom. So that's mm -hmm. to be, that's on the, I'm not sure what to do yet. Yeah. The music and sing-along is often a great thing for folks. And then the brain games, a lot of what I've created are simple brain teasers that you can do with some cues. Sure. And it's just fun to see people who are not one um, that I will talk about another time has, you know, doing the letters of the alphabet and thinking of words yeah. and then giving yeah. them a hint. It's, we're not in school. Sure. So it's supposed sure. to be fun. So the program that we were talking yeah. about, I think we've got a minute or two. You could um, mention that. Sure. I want to talk about an upcoming program. Real quick, I want to tell you something. I thought of you last night, Kathy. I do crosswords. And I was doing a crossword puzzle, and if you've watched for any length of time on this program, you know Kathy does not want us to use the phrase, senior moment. And my crossword, <laughs> one of the answers was a certain moment, and the answer was senior. And I thought, oh, Kathy would not approve of that. But anyway, <laughs> but crosswords, I love crosswords. Uh, Kathy did mention an upcoming program. It is March 20th. It is going to be at the Gables of Hudson Assisted Living. That is directly across the street from Joanne Fabric. March 20th at 10 in the morning. It is Kathy's program called Upgrade Your Memory Fitness Routine. And it is a precursor to her memory fitness group that she is forming. We we'll meet once a month for three we'll months. Meet once a month mm -hmm. for three months. Uh, it's going to be an outstanding. Yeah. Uh, I, I, just, I can't wait. I, I love it's your vision. It's been a dream of mine. I was going to say, I just love your vision on this. I'm so pleased that you're finally uh, yes. have a place to put this into the Gables has uh, been very generous practice. in doing so, that. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, so it's going to be a great program, but you need to reserve your seat. Kathy's programs always fill up. So you need to call the Gables at 330-653-9170. And again, that program is March 20th at 10 in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, don't miss it. Um, Kathy, I think if I hear what you're saying, uh, when someone has a diagnosis of dementia, it's not the end. They don't need to sit in a room right. with the shades pulled and the lights off and sit there and stare at the wall. Activity, activity. If you can be resourceful enough to think through and learn about this person, right. what they were before this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I want to mention also you'll have links on her website and on your blog that will give more information as she mentioned. Watch at the end of the program, you can get that information, but she gives more details about what we talked about today. Can you uh, send us on our way with uh, an assignment for this week? What, what yeah. can we do this week? This is, I think, really important to all of us. We all will hopefully age gracefully and have different levels of functioning. We have no idea. Um, but what would make your day? You know, what would make your day? And here's the thing that I have said from the beginning when I started doing programs. It, in the early stages, the gift in that is that you can get a person's story so that as they progress, to more difficulty and that word finding or difficulty explaining becomes an issue, then you can kind of give them hints or you know some of the answers. So in the later stages, then you can either tell their story for them or surround them with their stories. And I, you know, you gracefully talked about, um, you know, my heart. And I think that is so much of what I believe as we walk this journey. Um, with someone. so that's And we're going to talk in detail about getting someone's story our fifth week mm -hmm. in, in March. Mm -hmm. All right, Kathy, in our last moments, give us our quote, which I, I always love. I love this. Groucho Marx, if you've heard this story before, don't stop me because I like to hear it again. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And now go make it a great day. 